What up, guys? <clears throat> I'm coming to you live right now on Facebook from my car. Um, and I'm just leaving the hospital, and I got a strange message from one of my friends who's in residency, and she sent me a message, and then uh, <laughs> I had to step out and talk to her for a couple minutes. <clears throat> Excuse me, before I drove home. Because it's a sad day for her, and I think it's a good discussion and a, a good lead-in to a discussion that you guys ask a lot and that people have questions about, and it's about when to have a family if you're on the route to becoming a doctor. When is the right time as a pre-med or as a medical student or even as an attending or a, a private practice physician, when is the optimum time to have a family if you want one? And um, if this is your first time joining me, I'm Dr. Pines, I'm a parent productivity expert. Um, and if you want to be notified when I go live on Facebook, please click those three dots and turn on live notifications. Anyway, so my friend calls me this morning and she's a resident, fellow resident, and she's <laughs> been in residency a long time like I have. And she's devastated to find out that <laughs> she is actually past her window. And so she had a serious discussion with her um, OBGYN about her fertility and about the likelihood of adverse reactions with children. And based on the discussion, she feels it's too late for her to have children. She feels like it's too high risk at her age to have children. And she's devastated about it. And one of the things she said to me was, I never thought I was so focused on becoming a doctor. I never thought about, well, what happens if I can't have kids, what happens, right? Is it possible to wait too long? And I, I was like, that's actually really deep because I bet there's a lot of us and, and people, I, I had that video earlier this week and people said I was too focused on being a doctor, but I'm not unsympathetic. I'm not a, a non-feeling person. I do feel, and I feel for her. And I think what happens is you have to strike a balance in your priorities and what's fruitful and what's not fruitful. And my whole point earlier this week was that sometimes as pre-meds and as people in general, we focus on things that we cannot change, that we cannot alter, that will not impact us. Instead of focusing on the things that we can control, the things we can impact. And we allow things that are less of an importance or less of a priority to inhibit our ability to affect what really matters to us. And in my friend's case, she wants to be a doctor. She's focused on that, right? That's been her focus. She's, she loves being a physician. But what she was saying today is more than being a physician, the reason she wanted to be a physician was so that way she could provide a great life for her family and for her kids. And now she's like, well, what did I work all this hard for if I can't have the kids? And I thought that was very, very profound in that, Oftentimes, we think something is the most important, right? Oh, man, being a doctor is the most important thing to me. But when that thing gets taken out of the picture, you really can see, wait, right? What's really important? Not what's really important to you. Do you know what I'm saying? Like she thought doctor was most important to her, but now that she can't have kids, she recognizes, wait, all this was for having the kids. And she's trying to figure out, so she called me, she's like, you know, you do all this motivation stuff. And, you know, we've talked about this, like, you know, how important family is. And so I thought maybe you would understand it. So we talked for a while and I was like, man, I don't know how to reconcile that because I told her like, truthfully, I would be devastated if I couldn't have children. If I didn't have my kids, like my kids are my, the highlight of my life. So it was, it was really a sad conversation to have. And it was a real conversation that I feel like, and people think it's just women in medicine, but it's also men in medicine. And there's another resident I know who he and his wife made the decision at this point, like, Hey, listen, we're both old. We're, you know, let's just not have kids. And he said it was a, a difficult thing to say. And that every so often he wavers on his decision. Like, Oh man, we shouldn't, have, we should have said, we should have decided to have kids. We should not. Right. And it's this buyer's remorse or whatever. But I say all this to say, when you decide to have kids, like when is the right time? The truth is, it's like all things, even if you're not in medicine, there is no right time to have kids. It's never convenient. It's never affordable. It's never, right? It's never ideal to have kids at that time. And as someone who has now two kids, there's a lot of hardship that comes to having kids financially, time-wise, sleep. Oh, I miss my sleep. 
but it's worth it if it's worth it to you. And there's going to be struggle. You're going to feel like you don't know what you're doing as a parent. You're going to feel like you don't have enough resources. You're going to feel all these things. Understand that no matter when, it's like anything, right? When's the right time to, to become a premium? When's the right time to apply? There is no necessarily perfectly right time. There's only the rightest time, <laughs> right? You have to make that decision. And this is the, this is the best it's going to be. Let's just get it done. Let's have these kids and let's struggle and let's be broke and let's be sleepy and let's have poop all over us. And even to, today, I went into the hospital. We have board exams coming up. And so we're doing a board review. And I spent uh, last night, I made some cookie dough with my kid and I got cookie dough all over my shirt. It's terrible, terrible cookie dough all over my shirt, and nobody said anything. And people were looking at me, and I, I couldn't figure out why they were looking at me. Looking at my shirt, I got cookie dough, I got flour all over my shirt. Look crazy, right? But that's what kids are, right? I stay up late, I'm tired. I'll make cookies, right? We get up early, like all these things for kids. So when is the right time? That's what I'm trying to get to. There is no right time, and you have to decide when you can do it from a mental standpoint. This is the biggest thing about being a parent. Parents may be testified to this. The biggest thing about being a parent, the money figures itself out, the the time figures all itself out, the sleep even figures itself out, but you have to figure out if you're mentally ready to make someone else the number one priority in your life. Because if you have kids, it quickly, you realize in that instant, as soon as they're born, it's not about you anymore, it's immediately about them. And you become a secondary character in your own life. And so do you have the maturity to make those decisions? And in terms of the pre-med time, when is the best time to have a kid? I honestly would say any time you have a kid before medical school is the best time um, because it really doesn't matter in that period because as undergrad, you guys know, undergrad's pretty flexible. You may not realize it now, but undergrad's pretty flexible. You can have a kids and be fine and work it out and you can figure it out. Getting to medical school gets trickier. And if you guys don't know the layout of medical school curriculum, the first two years you're in the classroom, the second two years you're actually doing clinicals out in the hospital. The first two years are actually a pretty good time to have kids because class is optional. Therefore, what you can do is you can shift your schedule, right? A lot of times schools will record lectures. So you can actually, right, when your kids are awake, you can be being with the kids. And then when they fall asleep for their nap, you can go in and watch your lectures, right? And after they fall asleep, you can do your studying. So the first two years, I feel in medical school is the best time to have a kid because you have the most flexibility in your schedule. Once you get to clerkships, right, and you're in the hospital and you got to be there and the hours are set and you don't have control of your schedule, it gets a lot harder to have a newborn in that phase because the newborn period, I think, is the toughest because they're most dependent on you. They can't sit up. They can't eat without you. They can't even breathe without you, right? You got to put them on their, like, you got to watch them, make sure they're not suffocating. So I think having a newborn is the hardest period and you want to time that newborn period when you have the flexibility to care for a newborn. I think it's the first two years of medical school. The other thing that is if you have a kid in the first year, two years of medical school, a lot of medical schools will allow you to space your curriculum so you take less courses than your classmates and you can maybe do a three-year, you can do the first two years of medical school in three years or whatever it might be. So that's what I think is the best time to have it in medical school. Um, the other good time in medical school to have a kid is during fourth year. And so what I mean is you get pregnant at the beginning of fourth year, then you're hoping, right, because you've already sit in your application, you can kind of slack off a little bit in your clerkships, and you're hoping that people will give you some, cut you some slack because you're pregnant. You're like, oh, yeah, I'm sorry, I have to leave early today. I'm, I'm pregnant. Oh, right, you can leave, right? Um, that's what you're hoping. But the clerkships are less important at that point. You don't have to grind it out because you've already applied. There's not going to be really any additional things that are going to affect your residency. So I think that's a good time. The other thing about fourth year is that oftentimes people don't realize this, but medical school, you tend to finish early especially now the way they're shifting clerkships up even earlier into the second year, you're going to have three to six to eight months of your fourth year where you're not assigned any clerkships. You finish your clerkships and you're essentially waiting around to figure out where your residency is going to happen. And that's a good time to have a newborn where you don't have responsibilities at all and you're just waiting, right? You got good financial aid still because you're in medical school and you're waiting for residency to happen. So I think getting pregnant during the beginning of fourth year and having that baby at the end of fourth year is a good time too. In terms of residency, um, having a baby your first year residency, I think it would be a terrible idea. What you guys are going to learn is that as undergrads, when you go to medical school, you don't know anything. You're going to get to medical school, you're going to be completely confused. It's going to be entirely new. You're like, man, I, I thought I was super smart. You're going to feel dumb as a sack of rocks. 
The same thing happens when you go from the first two years of medical school to the third and fourth year of medical school. You get to the clerkships, you're like, oh man, I'm a baller. I, I ace step one. Now I'm going to go in here and I'm going to rock my clerkships. I'm going to be amazing. I'm going to be the best, uh, the best uh, <laughs> uh, medical student there's ever been in the hospital. And then you get to clerkships, you realize, wait, I don't know anything that's practical about caring for a patient. And then you get to residency and you realize, wait a minute. I thought I was a baller, but I don't actually know anything about truly taking responsibility of a patient and caring for all of their things with minimal oversight. And so at every level, your game steps up and you have this point of confusion. So having a baby at the start of residency, I think is a bad time to have a baby because you're going to be transitioning to, into a whole new level of responsibility. As a medical student, as an example on medicine, right? So internal medicine tends to be a hard rotation because you're there long hours, you have to care for patients that are very sick, so you're there. As a medical student, you may carry anywhere from one to three patients on the medicine service. And when I say carry these patients, you have a resident who's, you have an a, a intern who's overseeing these patients as well, and then you have a resident who's overlooking the intern, and then you have the attending who's looking overlooking the team. When you get to become an intern, you now go from carrying, sort of carrying three patients, but really the intern does all the orders, they do all the complex discharge stuff, all the paperwork that you don't ever learn about as a medical student. Then you get to intern year or your first year of residency, and now you go from caring from at most three patients to now caring up to 12 patients, right? 12 patients you have to see, know what their conditions are, know their back history, know what the treatments are, know what you're concerned about, and be following them and tracking them every day and dropping all these. It's crazy. It gets extremely difficult. And then over time, right, that first year is hard. And then after that first year, you learn, oh, man, 12 patients is nothing. Give me 50. I'm good. So I think that first year is a hard year to have kids because your level of responsibility and confusion is going to go up tremendously, um, especially if you do an advanced specialty like anesthesia. It, it, we were just having this conversation with, um, I forgot who I was talking about, we were having this conversation. There are literally zero anesthesia lectures in medical school. There might be one, maybe an anesthesiologist comes by and talks about pharmacology, but there's zero anesthesia lectures in medical school. So when you get to your anesthesia residency, you have really no anesthesia skills. You can't hook an IV up. You can't put a line in. You can't intubate. You don't know the drugs because they never talk about volatile anesthetics or propofol. You're like, what is that? Or, or, you don't understand, right? And so you have zero knowledge. And so that year, in addition to having the responsibility kick up, you also have to do a lot of studying and getting your core fundamentals down. So it's an awful time to have a baby. Fast forward. When's a great time to have a baby in residency? I think in the end of residency, so your last year of residency, much like medical school, that last year of residency, you've learned what you need to learn, you have a lot of elective time, research time, that's a great time to get pregnant and pop a baby out, because then you're going to be able to protect that newborn period with some research, or some paternity or maternity leave time, and care for your kid, and then you'll also be so close to getting real salary where you can afford to have a kid as an attending. Um, that would be my suggestion. If you're getting up there in age, so if you're someone who's entering medical school and you're old, get that baby knocked out early because you don't want to be in a situation like these two people I mentioned where you wanted to have kids and you've the boat has sailed. So I, I really, I think that's a sad, sad thing to want something like kids, which is a big thing. Like, oh, I want kids. And then to, to have to come to the realization like, man, I missed my opportunity to have kids. And it was because I was so focused on my career, which I thought was the most important thing, but actually the kids were my most important thing. And for me, it took having kids to realize, and I guess my kids have always been my motivation, but it became real when I had them. And so now I'm, I'm a much more motivated person, even than I was before they came, because I recognize like, man, if, if I don't work, my kid doesn't eat. If I don't love my kid, nobody's loving my kid. Nobody's hugging my kid. Right. If I don't watch out for him, like, right. And my kid is like all of a sudden become like this daredevil where he likes to climb up on stuff and jump. Just jump. Oh, I'm just going to climb up on the back of the couch and jump into the abyss of this hard floor. No big deal. Right. It's like, no. <laughs> so I constantly find myself catching him in the midair, right. Protecting him. Oh, protect your brain. If I'm not there to catch him, nobody's catching him. He's cracking his brain. Right, he's learned now to move his stool and get up into cabinets and do all kind of crazy stuff. I came the other day; he was on the counter. I'm like, "How are you on the counter?" And he pointed to his stool. He got into the stool, then climbed on top of the the cabinets that are near the floor, on top of that door, and then got up on the counter and then proceeded to get into the top cabinets that are above. I'm like, "This kid is a straight up monkey." But if I'm not there to keep him out of 
the craziness that's up in the cabinets or keeping my head, nobody's there. And so, ah, I was like, man, that was a hard conversation to have. Like, no kids in your life, even though it's important to you. So I encourage you guys. I know I talk about no excuses, just dominate and just going 100% towards medical school. But at the same time, don't sacrifice things that are important to you in your personal life and to you as a person for medical school and for being a doctor. That's not the point I was making. If someone's dead, they're dead. You can't bring them back by spending time with their corpse. But if you want to create life in terms of a kid, if you want to spend time with your kids, and this happens, and I thought it was, I think it's a beautiful thing that people do, is people who got pregnant in medical school, right, kids in medical school, what you saw them do was like, hey, I don't need to have the highest test scores. I just need to pass these tests, and I'd rather spend the extra time with my kids. And that is totally a no excuses, just dominate mentality because they've recognized, right? The number one thing I always ask you guys is what's the purpose, right? What are we trying to achieve? Kids, that's a priority. If you have kids, you need to make them a priority. That will make you a good parent. So there's nothing wrong with saying, listen, I don't need the highest test scores. I need to get my doctorate, <laughs> but I'd rather spend that extra time that I could do studying with my kids, loving them, caring for them, being there for them. There's nothing wrong with that. So I encourage you guys, I know this was a long way about saying when's the best time to have kids, but I just wanted to have kind of a discussion about priorities because I think that's really what it comes down to is you have to decide when you're willing to make your kids a priority over everything else and when you're in a position to be able to do that. And in terms of medical training, the best times, I think pre-med anytime, um, medical school during the first two years or the fourth year at the very end, and then doing residency, not the early part of your residency, I'd wait till the end of your residency. So that's what I have to say for today. I hope you guys like this video. Um, as always, you guys know the website, www.premedproductivity.com. You guys have a great day today. Um, tomorrow, I will be announcing... Actually, I'll probably do it today. I'll just do a recorded video. Um, I want to do like this. So if you guys remember, before Christmas, um, people were being very negative and racist to me. So what I did was I said I'll run a contest. If people want to spread positivity and share a testimonial with me and share my video when I was talking about positivity that I would give away a free enrollment into my $500 course. Well, because I am so late, and I apologize for being late in announcing the winners for that, I haven't had a time. I want to do like this fancy raffle thing. I got this, I, I cut all the, the names, right? So I got the names, put them in an Excel document, and I print them out, and I cut them into little sheets, and I was going to put them in this bowl and raffle them off. But there's a whole lot of prep to do that. So we're going to make it simple. I'm just going to announce the names because I actually mixed them up on the Excel sheet, and then I'm just going to announce the names. But I mentioned names because I was going to give away one enrollment in my $500 course. Now I'm going to give away three enrollments. So now I'm going to give away $1,500 worth of courses to people. And anyone who submitted a testimonial and shared that video, I'm going to get at you guys. You'll get an email within the next couple days giving you 50% off my interview course. So more free courses and discounts for people. So this is my way of saying I appreciate you guys. I care about you guys. I'm here for you guys. And as always, I I'm so happy happy, happy, happy this week because my video a couple days ago, I talked about how if you guys can't afford my courses, email me, ask me for a discount. Let me know what you can pay and we can try to work something out. And I'm so happy because I've been able to work out payment plans and deals with all sorts of people to get them access to the high quality premium content they need to have success. I'm here to help you guys be successful. It's not about the money. Right? I have to stay viable. I have to be able to host the courses. Right, I have to have that. But I'm here for you guys. So if ever you guys are stuck and you're like, man, I really wish I knew how to study. Oh, man, I really wish I knew how to get to medical school. Oh, man, I really wish I knew how to uh, apply to medical school. Oh, man, I really wish I knew how to interview. My website has courses for all that, www.premedproductivity.com. And if you can't afford it, just let me know. Right, I've even extended payment plans now. If you didn't, haven't checked... I used to have no payment plans, and then last year you guys said, hey, we need payment plans. I made three-month payment plans, and then people said, hey, I need more payment plans, so now I have six-month payment plans. That's outrageous. Six months, you can pay out the whole thing. But anyway, so I mean all this to say that tomorrow the announcers, I will announce the winners. There'll be three of you guys who are getting uh, free access to my courses. Um, and if I announce your name and you're already in that course, then you get a free coaching session with me, which is cool too. So everyone have a great and wonderful Saturday. And if you have kids, take a second, hug your kids. If you don't have kids, sit down right now and make a decision. Do I want to have kids? If I do want to have kids, when are we going to have them? 
Let's not let the buzzer, right? Let's not let the, the clock run out while we're over here dilly-dallying. Figure out what's up because my friend is devastated. I'm devastated for her. And I don't want you guys to experience that devastation. So have a great, great day. Um, yeah. And I'll see you guys tomorrow at uh, 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, our normal scheduled time. We'll be live and you guys will be picking the topic and I'll be announcing the winners of the uh, holiday contest. So thank you guys very, very much. Happy New Year to everyone. Oh, I hope 2018 is going to be an awesome year for you. It's going to be an awesome year for me. I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm excited. All right. Have a great day. Bye-bye.